हेलो फ्रेंड्स व्हाट्स एप सो लेट एस कंटिन्यू द टॉपिक ऑफ फिजिकल पॉलिसी इन द प्रीवियस वीडियोस वी हैव ऑलरेडी स्टडीड गवर्नमेंट बजटिंग प्रोसेस हाउ बजट इज क्लासिफाइड इनटू रेवेन्यू अकाउंट एंड कैपिटल अकाउंट एंड वी हैव रिपीटेडली हर्ड द वर्ड कॉल्ड डेफिसिट ओके आई वॉज टॉकिंग अबाउट डेफिसिट सो डेफिसिट इज बेसिकली द डिफरेंस बिटवीन एक्सपेंडिचर एंड रेवेन्यू ऑफ द गवर्नमेंट we in this particular video we will understand uh, what is exactly deficit how they are classified into uh, two three different kinds of de deficits so first of all let us study about the fiscal deficit fiscal deficit also known as gross fiscal deficit okay this is also known as gross fiscal deficit because here we look at the total expenditure of the government minus total receipts of the government except borrowings so here what is the total expenditure of government including the revenue expenditure and capital expenditure okay minus total receipts except borrowings so whatever borrowing government is doing whether it is external borrowing or internal borrowing except that borrowing whatever total receipts government is having that is considered here for example here uh, in receipts it will be revenue receipts like uh, tax taxation okay tax payments interest payments then there can be some capital receipts as well for example if government is selling some psu or some uh, other asset then whatever proceeds are obtained from that so those are also considered here only borrowings are left out matlab jo loan diya liya jata hai government ne jo karza leti hai government market se usko chhod kar jo bhi baki ke receipts hoti hai that is considered here so fiscal deficit or gross fiscal deficit is total expenditure revenue plus capital minus total receipts excluding borrowings so total expenditure minus now what is total receipts except borrowing it is total revenue receipts plus non debt creating capital receipts right borrowing means what if you are borrowing something that means you are creating debt right borrowing is ba basically creating debt so non debt creating capital receipts is considered uh, here and we are leaving apart the borrowing and the fiscal deficit is met through borrowings definitely see so whatever our total expenditure is there and whatever total receipt is there except borrowing that is met through borrowing basically this difference will be borrowing otherwise it will be balance right so whatever expenditure we are doing and whatever total receipt plus borrowing that should balance that should become a zero but we are here we are leaving aside the borrowing so this fiscal deficit is nothing but your total borrowings so fiscal deficit is what it is net borrowing at home whatever you are borrowing from the domestic economy whatever you are borrowing from the rbi that is how much money you are uh, taking from rbi this is known as printing of money how much you are asking rbi to print money for for you and borrowing from abroad from the foreign uh, countries or foreign institutions borrowing at home what is included here small saving schemes uh, or from commercial banks through slr so i had told you in commercial banks uh, lecture uh, in uh, banking system lecture that the banking uh, banks can invest in slr uh, in the form of government securities so in a way they are giving loan to the government by buying their securities so fiscal deficit is met through these three channels and it should be equal to the sum of all these three uh, things <clears throat> now let us look at the next concept called revenue deficit revenue deficit is simple it is revenue expenditure minus revenue receipts so in fiscal deficit we had considered the total expenditure minus total receipts except borrowing here we are considering only the revenue expenditure minus revenue receipt so basically here we are trying to see how much of the current expenditure is getting financed through the current receipts okay revenue means what current for this year which is not creating any liability or which is not creating any assets uh, which is not affecting any liability or which is not affecting any assets so they are the current expenditure and current receipts so we are trying to see here how much of our current expenditure is getting financed through the current receipts ideally friends this should be zero so all your revenue expenditure should be met by revenue receipts so whatever expenditure you are doing in the current year it should be met from the current receipts only now in the uh, revenue expenditure there is one thing that the government of india gives to the states okay state grant to create capital assets 
to create capital assets now government of india is giving this money to the state so it is a revenue expenditure for uh, government of india because it will not get it back it is not creating any assets or it is not uh, uh, you know increasing or decreasing any assets for the government of india so for government of india it is revenue expenditure but to the state government to which it is giving and the state government is generating capital assets from it so basically in the country overall if we look the capital assets are getting generated so the revenue deficit which is left after subtracting these grants for creating capital assets is known as effective revenue deficit okay so revenue deficit minus the grants for creation of capital assets so whatever is the percentage of total money that is given to the state government for creation of capital assets if that is subtracted from the revenue deficit then we get the effective revenue deficit this is a, a concept which was introduced in 2011 12 budget for the first time in order to understand what exactly is the effective revenue deficit effective meaning actually see it's somewhere in the country capital assets are getting formed but for the government of india it is a revenue expenditure that's why it is a part of revenue deficit but it has to be subtracted to get the effective revenue deficit as to how much exactly we are expending for the current expenditure from the current receipts then the third term is primary deficit now see what is primary deficit primary deficit is fiscal deficit minus net interest liabilities so see our expenditure our ex total expenditure also includes interest payments on the previously borrowed loans like right central government ne yadi kuch loan liya hoga uh, pehle jo pehle ka jo loan hai uska interest payments karta hai aur wo interest payments bhi hamara expenditure ka part hota hai right so if we just subtract those interest liabilities interest payments from the fiscal deficit we get the primary deficit okay so uh, why this is done because these interest liabilities are due to past loans matlab pehle jo uh, bhutkal mein humne jo loans liye the uski wajah se ye interest liabilities hai the interest liabilities are because the loans taken in the past not the current loans so it is done to basically measure the performance of one government with another for example from 2014 to 19 government has accumulated a debt of say 50 billion dollars and um, suppose in 2019 a new government will come a new government comes and it has to pay interest it has to pay interest on this 50 billion dollars now this new government will say that this 50 billion dollar was taken by the old government and we are paying interest on it so our effective deficit our primary deficit is not so much we have to subtract those interest payments which we are making for the previous government so our actual deficit is fiscal deficit minus interest payments that we are doing that is our primary deficit so primary deficit is basically borrowing on account of current expenditure exceeding revenues it is just on account of what we are doing it in the current year not of the past past ki wajah se jo humko interest payment karna pad raha hai wo wo isme consider nahi hota hai that is called primary deficit okay and it is basically to measure performance of one government with another now you tell me if the primary deficit of one government is reducing if the primary deficit is reducing what does it mean it means that the current government is performing well the current government is performing well because primary deficit is reducing meaning what it has to pay the interest liabilities of the previous government but overall it is performing well it comes to fiscal deficit so fiscal deficit is reducing when you leave aside the interest liabilities of the previous loans automatic stabilizers this is another concept so as i have told you friends that one of the functions of government is stabilization function to bring back economy to the normal by per, by bringing in some policy or scheme like for example if the inflation is increasing in the economy then the government will what it will increase the tax rates tax rates are increasing meaning consumption will fall in the economy because the disposable income of people will fall and therefore the prices will come into control because now the demand has reduced so uh, this is one of the stabilization function but there are certain policy tools which are called automatic stabilizers so they are not done in order to stabilize the economy but they will automatically stabilize the economy okay so one of the example is proportional income tax proportional income tax meaning that you know depending on your income if your income is high your income tax will also be high this is known as proportional income tax 
फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ यू आर अर्निंग टेन लैख एंड यू विल पे टेन परसेंट ऑफ योर एंड यू विल पे टेन परसेंट इनकम टैक्स इफ योर इनकम इज ट्वेंटी लैख यू विल पे ट्वेंटी परसेंट ऑफ इनकम टैक्स सो दिस इज नोन एज प्रोग्रेसिव टैक्सेशन ओके योर टैक्स लाइबिलिटी इज इंक्रीजिंग डिपेंडिंग ऑन योर इनकम इफ योर इनकम इज ऑल्सो इंक्रीजिंग एंड दिस इज नोन एज प्रपोर्शनल इनकम टैक्स नाउ बिकॉज ऑफ प्रपोर्शनल इनकम टैक्स वॉट हैपन्स वेन एवर द जी डी पी राइजेस द डिस्पोजेबल इनकम ऑल्सो राइजेस बट लेस दैन द राइज इन जी डी पी एज पार्ट ऑफ इट इज साइफ ऑन ऑफ एज टैक्सेस नाउ फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ द जी डी पी इज इंक्रीजिंग इन द कंट्री ओके दैट मीन्स वॉट लोगों की इनकम इंक्रीज हो रही है इनकम ऑफ पीपल इज इंक्रीजिंग इनकम ऑफ पीपल इज इंक्रीजिंग बट आउट ऑफ दिस इनकम पीपल हैव टू गिव टैक्सेस टू द गवर्नमेंट राइट टैक्सेस विल इंक्रीज तो जी डी पी में जितना इंक्रीज हो रहा है उतना लोगों की पर्सनल डिस्पोजेबल इनकम में इंक्रीज नहीं हो रहा है ओके द डिस्पोजेबल इनकम ऑफ पीपल इज नॉट इंक्रीजिंग एज मच उतना परसेंटेज से वो इंक्रीज नहीं हो रहा है बिकॉज पार्ट ऑफ दिस इनकम हैज टू बी पेड बैक टू द गवर्नमेंट एज टैक्सेस सो इफ द जी डी पी इज इंक्रीजिंग दैट मीन्स द नेशनल इनकम इज इंक्रीजिंग बट आउट ऑफ दिस नेशनल इनकम गवर्नमेंट इज टेकिंग अवे द टैक्सेस बिकॉज ऑफ प्रपोर्शनल थिंग तो जितना ज़्यादा बढ़ेगा उतना ज़्यादा टैक्सेस भी इंक्रीज होगा राइट एंड देयर फोर यू डोंट हैव एज मच मनी इन द इकोनॉमी टू स्पेंड एंड देयर फोर द कंजम्पन डिमांड डज नॉट राइज दैट मच शार्पली तो जितना जी डी पी इंक्रीज हो रहा है उतना कंजम्पन डिमांड शार्प इंक्रीज नहीं हो रहा है इसका मतलब देखिए इकोनॉमी स्टेबिलाइज हो रही है यहाँ पे मतलब यदि जी डी पी का बहुत ज़्यादा उछाल हो रहा है बट कंजम्पन डिमांड इतना इंक्रीज नहीं हो रहा है एंड देयर फोर देयर इज इन्फ्लेशन इज नॉट इंक्रीजिंग सो मच राइट बिकॉज द डिमांड इज नॉट राइजिंग बाय दैट मच सिमिलरली उसका उल्टा यदि हम केस कंसिडर करें ड्यूरिंग रिसेशन फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ द जी डी पी इज फॉलिंग ओके जी डी पी इज फॉलिंग मीनिंग वॉट द नेशनल इनकम इज फॉलिंग इनकम इज फॉलिंग बट इनकम इज फॉलिंग मीनिंग दैट नाउ द पीपल हैव टू पे लेस टैक्सेस बिकॉज देर इनकम्स आर लेस सो ओवरऑल फॉल इन डिस्पोजेबल इनकम पर्सनल डिस्पोजेबल इनकम इज लेस दैन द फॉल इन जी डी पी करेक्ट बिकॉज से इफ जी डी पी इज डिक्रीजिंग बाय टेन परसेंट इफ जी डी पी इज डिक्रीजिंग बाय टेन परसेंट ओवरऑल इनकम दैट मीन्स इट इज डिक्रीजिंग बाय टेन परसेंट बट नाउ द टैक्सेज विच पीपल अर्लियर वर से पीपल वेर पेइंग से टेन परसेंट टैक्स नाउ बिकॉज देयर इनकम हैज रिड्यूस्ड बिकॉज ऑफ द प्रपोर्शनल इनकम टैक्स सिस्टम नाउ दे विल पे ओनली फाइव परसेंट टैक्स सो ओवरऑल द डिस्पोजेबल इनकम विद पीपल इज नॉट डिक्रीजिंग बाय दैट मच इट इज नॉट डिक्रीजिंग बाय ओवरऑल टेन परसेंट इट इज डिक्रीजिंग से ओनली बाय फाइव परसेंट सो देयर फोर द कंजम्पन डिमांड डज नॉट फॉल शार्पली द कंजम्पन डिमांड डज नॉट ड्रॉप एज मच had the tax liability been fixed if this tax was fixed that the if it was a fixed tax ki you have to pay so much money only then the consumption demand would have also fallen but now people have to pay less taxes so the consumption demand does not drop so much and therefore the economy is stabilized so proportional income tax is an automatic stabilizer of the economy now let us look at one more concept which is known as discretionary fiscal policy What is discretionary fiscal policy? Discretionary fiscal policy means that when the government is trying to deliberately stabilize the economy by performing some actions, right? Here we have seen that this is automatic stabilizer. Government is not taking any specific measure to uh, to stabilize the economy. But if the government is taking some particular measure, that is, for example, this Atmanirbhar Bharat scheme, okay? For example, Atmanirbhar Bharat scheme. which was launched during the covid-19 pandemic to bring economy back to its track by spending into particular sector by providing loans to the state government by providing loans to the msme sector right so this is a deliberate action okay matlab government jaan boojh kar kuch actions karti hai economy ko stabilize karne ke liye and such fiscal policy is known as discretionary fiscal policy discretion matlab apni marzi se right apni marzi se jo government karti hai usko discretion bolte hain discretionary fiscal policy For example, when investment fall, government raises its expenditure to keep the demand in the market. For example, because of some reason, investment in the economy, that is capital formation in the economy, is falling. Now, because investment is falling, therefore demand in the economy is falling. Overall, demand is falling in the economy. Now, what will government do? Government will increase its expenditure. Now, government increasing expenditure means what? Demand is again increasing. 
if the government is increasing expenditure that means demand in the economy is increasing so this is how the government stabilizes uh, the demand in the economy so such a policy is known as discretionary fiscal policy i just wanted to mention these important concepts here as these are mentioned in the ncrt textbooks and after uh, watching this video i am sure you will understand uh, those concepts after reading from the book so we'll uh, continue fiscal policy in the next video thank you